football probably ain't never had a bad day on the Chesapeake. I had a bad day on the Chesapeake. A day I'll never forget if I live to be a hundred. November the 2nd, 1999. Do you remember? I do. That lady remembers. Are you a, ke are you a gentleman? No. No? No. She remembers. You don't remember me in 1999, do you? Rebecca made the cover of just about every newspaper in this country. Every newspaper, the Associated Press had this in the newspaper. She also was on television, ABC, NBC. You don't remember this? November the 2nd, 1999. She was also in every... Do you know a magazine that published it in 30 countries? National Geographic published it in 30 countries. We were there. We were in 30 countries about my boat. November the 2nd, 1999. I was dredging oysters. It was the second day of oyster season. I'm up the river about 10 miles. I'm dredging oysters. It's raining, raining, raining. It's nasty as it can be. We work from sun up to sundown. Well, that day I decided to quit early. We left the upper river. We were on our way home. Wind was like 20 mile an hour. Right now the wind is about five mile an hour. On the way home, the wind picked up from 20 to 30, and then it went to 40, and then it went to 50 mile an hour, and it busted my sails. Then I had to put my anchor over and anchor. Then the wind went to the wind went up to 60, 70, and 80 mile an hour. 80 mile an hour. I could see. I could not see that electrician man from here because the rain was just about horizontal. It was pouring down raining. It was blowing 80 mile an hour. I, I was on an anchor. Water was up to your waist on my deck when it washed on the boat. The deck had needed rebuilding. The deck was the only thing I hadn't rebuilt. It was leaking in the deck. At one point I got down below, I took a bucket and I bailed, I bailed until I thought I was gonna have a heart attack. My three crew members were so scared. You can't imagine how bad it was. Well, finally, I said, if I keep on, I'm gonna have a heart attack. I may as well take a chance of getting drowned as to have a heart attack. So I finally called my wife. I got her on the phone, told her to send me some help. I don't know if any of you know Robbie Wilson. He's one of the highlighters on the Chesapeake. He is a, he's my next door neighbor. My wife sent him out. He's got a 50 foot work boat. On the way from here out to help me, he busted the windows out of his cabin of his boat. He told me later, he's been from Baltimore to Virginia. Storm, storm, but he's never seen it that rough. I've never seen it that rough. On the way out, finally, he, luckily he had radar. You couldn't see 50 feet for the rain. Well, he found me with radar. He started towing me home. She's still taking more water on. We were about 10 minutes from being in smooth water. A far boat was waiting with a big pump to pump me out. Well, then the last thing I seen, Rebecca went to the bottom. This is November the 2nd, 1999. Rebecca is on the bottom. Well, he turned around and picked up me and my crew. Nobody got hurt except myself. I got a couple broken ribs, but my crew never got hurt. The next day, it was this picture was taken the next day. Still too much wind to do any salvage. The next day, I don't know if any of you have any docks built at your house. Bailey, you ever heard of Bailey? Bailey, Marine. Uh, Bailey Marine. He came out. He had a 30 foot, a 35 ton train. Some guys from Middle River, Deckelman. A, a, a rescue outfit. We got the boat off the bottom, two feet from the top of the water, and the crane couldn't pick it up. We put her back on the bottom at dark on Thursday. When I got in Tillman, 
they charged me $38 and $3,200, $7,000 for trying. Friend of mine, you might know Mr. Harrison, Buddy Harrison, friend of mine, he called the governor, Glenn Denning was the governor then, he called Glenn Denning and said, we're getting ready to lose the oldest boat in the Chesapeake in Maryland. It's an asset to the state of Maryland. Glenn Denning okayed for the train from Baltimore to come down. And they come down the next morning, and by mid-afternoon, we had the boat floating. Now, after this happened, I deal with a lot of bed and breakfast people. people. And then they said, what are you going to do now? I said, I'm going to patch the deck up and go to work. This is the first work of oyster season. I got to go to work. They said, if you don't get it upgraded, we're not going to send you people next year. I said, your people would never be on my boat in a storm. I'm never going to be offshore in a storm. It's only happened one time in my life, and that's when I was working, not with people. They said, we want the boat upgraded. So then the Coast Guard, friends of mine, high up friends, they said, please let us certify the boat. If you let us certify the boat, you take more people. I put it on dry dock in November. I had to put I had to put all new deck on the boat. I had to do whatever they told me. To. I had to put all new deck on to satisfy the, to make it more safer. And then in June. This is a ballast test. This shows you the weight of people. Today, I can take 49 people legal for the Coast Yard. Before I sank, six people is all I could take. An uncertified boat can only take six people. Doesn't matter if it's the Queen Mary. If it's not certified, it can't take but six people. So it ended up the best thing happened because now, if I'd still taken six people, I wouldn't be able to maintain this boat with six people. So I, she would probably die. She probably wouldn't die, really, because there used to be a thousand of these boats. Right now, last winter, we had eight actually working. When I started in 57, we had over 80. This boat's going to be here when your great-great-grandchildren want to ride on it because... This boat is designated a National Historic Landmark. And what that means is, if something happens to me, something happens to Wade, something happens to Michael, we can't keep the boat floating, I can get grants. This boat ain't never going to die. Now, his boat is a National Historic Landmark also, and it's one other boat, but all the rest of them are not historical landmarks. So that's the best part about being... Design. It's an act of Congress to do this. You just don't get them designated to be. So, now you know about my boat. You ain't got a black book, huh? <laughs> you didn't remember seeing me, right? You don't remember reading about it. You do, right? Do. Okay. You must not read newspapers. <laughs> you must not watch television because you don't yeah. get Southern Living magazines. Southern Living. <laughs> They was in Southern Living. <laughs> National Geographic published it in 30 countries. This was in 30 countries. And you never even seen that. <laughs> did you see, <laughs> did you see the, you see Preservation Magazine? Now tell me, did you see the perfect storm? Yeah. Now, yeah. You, you saw the perfect storm? You all saw the perfect storm? Well, look what, look what preservation said about, what did preservation say, the top line? George Clooney. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I don't know if you remember reading this.